How's it going everyone? I'm here with my WWE NXT TakeOver Fatal 4-Away review. Uh, TakeOver Fatal 4 was on tonight, as you guys can probably hear in the background from the replay. Uh, TakeOver overall was a, a good show. It was, it was good. You know, I wouldn't say it was a great show. I definitely think it's the weakest of the three live specials from NXT so far this year. But I still think it was good. You know, uh, NXT is usually a fun show. Uh, and that's what it was tonight. I thought it was fun and enjoyable. And uh, yeah, let's get into the review. Now the first thing we start off with the show was the NXT Tag Team Championship match, the Ascension, the Ascension taking on Kalisto and Sin Cara, now known as Lucha Dragons. Uh, good opener here, it was a pretty fun match, you know, the Ascension looked good. Uh, you know, Sin Cara pretty much was, start, Sin Cara started off the match and pretty much got isolated from Kalisto uh, for a majority of the match. When Kalisto got uh, tagged in, uh, loads of fun match here. It's just a good opening tag team match, nothing too spectacular here. Uh, Kalisto and Sin Cara actually ended up getting the victory when Sin Cara, not Sin Cara, Kalisto, and up hitting his finisher on um, on Victor for the one two three victory. Uh, so Clisio and Sin Cara are your new NXT Tag Team Champions. Uh, what they do with the Ascension now? Hopefully they go to the main roster. Uh, I'd love to see them few with the Usos for the Tag Team titles. I don't really I'm not really feeling started and Goldust as Tag Team Champions. So hopefully the Usos retain that Champions, which will lead to a Ascension feud. Uh, but if not, you know uh, whatever. You know hopefully they do something with the Ascension from since they lost Tag Team titles, being Tag Team Champions for nearly a year. But yeah, good opening match here, nothing spectacular, like I said. Uh, the match is what everyone's in car is doing, but when uh, Kalisto got in, you just had a lot of ton of fun stuff, a uh, ton of fun in this match. Uh, some high fly on the outside. Uh, Kalisto just like a million bucks, and the Ascension looked alright. They didn't look too good, I thought. Uh, their tag work was good, but like, uh, later on the show, you'll see what I mean by saying the Ascension didn't look that good at all. But, yeah, fun way to open the show. Uh, next, you had uh, CJ Parker taking on the debuting uh, Baron Corbin. Stupid, pointless segment. Well, not pointless and stupid, but it was just basically a squash match to make a uh, Baron Cor Corbin look good. This is his debut match, which I'm I'm actually kind of surprised on the debut. I know he's been in WWE since 2011, 2012 ish, so he's been there for a few years. And he's just not debuting, so uh, it was pointless squash. Uh, Baron Corbin actually has a pretty sick finisher. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty sick what he hit there. I don't even know what the hell to call it. It was just like he Irish whipped him into him, like he grabbed him and just like face planted him. It was a sick finisher. I really liked it. It was awesome. Yeah, just basically, you know, a segment to, uh, you know, get Baron Corbin noticed and, you know, to impress people. So, you're basically a squash match, though. Uh, next, we had, oh yeah, by the way, throughout the, the show, uh, something I really liked was they actually had video packages from each guy in the, in the main event. So, you had, like, a Tyson Kidd video package, Adrian Neville, uh, Sami Zayn, and Tyler Breeze one. So, I thought that was a good way to have the main event. I really enjoyed those, too. So, that's just a little side note there. But next we go on to the hair versus hair match. Enzo Amore versus uh, Sylvester Lafort. Um, uh, whatever match here, nothing really that good. You know, Enzo, Enzo Amore, I know everyone's a huge fan of him and uh, Big Cass. Uh, Character-wise, I like him, but in the ring-wise, he doesn't really do anything for me. This match is bad. Um, just nothing really to talk about. Just slow pace and just a lot of holds. And it was not good by any means, I thought. I just thought it was a pointless hair versus hair match. Uh, Enzo Amore ended up being the victory that they roll up, and he actually held the tights for the 1-2-3 victory. And the ending was even more pointless to me, considering the fact that after the match, they didn't even shave Sylvester Lafort's hair. They actually poured the bucket of, I think it was, uh, it was some kind of soap that cuts your hair, soap, soap of baldness, they called it or whatever. Uh, they ended up pouring on his partner, Marcus Lewis, his head instead of his, so... Uh, it was pretty pretty pointless, you know. They didn't even shave the guy who said they were supposed to shave. So I thought that the whole match and segment was completely pointless. Uh, and they wasted uh, like a, they wasted some time too. Of course, Enzo was kind of prone before the match too, so I thought that was a waste of time. The whole thing, I was a fan of it. I thought it was a waste of time. I didn't like it at all. So pretty much nothing really special there. Uh, next, we have William Regal make his way out to the ring to introduce the day de the uh, the debuting Kenta. Uh, Kenta comes out, debuts. Uh, pretty much has a promo, you know, he says that's a dream come true to be in WWE, especially in NXT. Uh, speaks some Japanese, and he actually, uh, he announces that he will be changing his ring name. He'll be changing his ring name to, uh, to honor one of his heroes, which will be, uh, Hido Itami, I think it was. Yeah, Hido Itami. Um, the, the name's kind of complicated. It's going to be a mouthful to say every time you say it. Like, it doesn't sound hard to say, like, oh, Hido Itami. But, like, after a while, it's going to get, like... Oh, that's a weird name to say, Hido Tommy, Hido Tommy, Hido Tommy, Hido Tommy. So yeah, um, like I said, right now I'm not really in favor of it. Um, you know, I should expect it to come uh, for a name change for Kenta, but like it'll take it'll take time to get used to, used to. You know, like it takes time to get used to that. people change the names like El Generico to Sami Zayn, uh, Pac to Adrian Neville. You know, it takes time, and eventually in time, I think everyone will get used to it. So 
I get a little debut for Kenta too, a nice little segment, I enjoyed it. And of course the Ascension actually came out, this is what I meant earlier in the video when I said the Ascension didn't look too good. The Ascension, the Ascension came out demanding a rematch from Regal. Regal basically said no, the Ascension attacked uh, Kenta or Tommy, and um, you know they basically demanded a match, and Tommy actually got back in the ring and basically cleaned house, he actually took both the Ascension out, so I thought that made the Ascension look weak considering, you know, I, well, it made Kenta look good, but it made the Ascension look weak, so it was kind of like, you know, benefiting it. Kenta, but it made the Ascension look weak in my opinion. Didn't really, wasn't in favor of that. But I guess it made uh, make Kenta look good somehow. So good little segment there. I enjoyed that. Uh, next after that, we actually had uh, Mojo Rally versus Bull Dempsey. Another squash match. Uh, Dempsey pretty much dominated Mojo Rally and ended up hitting a uh, headbutt from the top rope uh, for the one, two, three victory. Just another squash. Me and the squash, I thought. Uh, Mojo Rally was pretty funny because that arrival, he was squashing people. Now he's the one being squashed, so it's pretty funny how you know Mojo Rally used to be a top guy. Well, not a top guy, but looked like he was going to be a top guy, and now he's pretty much a jobber because I haven't really seen him do anything significant since arrival. So um, how the mighty have fallen, and uh, Bull Dempsey actually another top, another headbutt from the top rope, and actually busted Mojo Rally open. So that was like, whoa, that you can definitely tell that was vicious considering he busted him open. But yeah, just another meaningless, uh, meaningless squash. Nothing uh, special there by any means. And then after that, I'm looking through uh, my tweets right now to pretty much, um, you know, remember what happened. Oh, next we had Enzo and uh, Enzo and Big Cass looking for uh, Sylvester Lafort to shave his head. Uh, they did another segment where they end up uh, leading, um, uh, leading them to the ring and end up showing uh, Marcus Lewis's bald head, which I thought was stupid. Enzo Mori botched it too. Like he went to grab it, he was supposed to grab it and pull it, but he, he went to grab and pull, but he missed the first time, so he had to do it again, so that was pretty funny that he botched something simple like that. But yeah, another a segment that wasn't really needed. Uh, like I said, just eh, the whole, the, the Sylvester LaFord, Enzo, big cast thing, it, I'm not really in favor of it right now, but just I guess as a time filler, I guess, they need something to fill time, so they did this segment, but nothing special there. Uh, next, we go on to the uh, NXT Women's Championship match, Charlotte versus Bayley. Uh, very good match here, solid stuff from both women. Uh, a lot of technicality in this match, and it was good back and forth. They had some near falls, and a very enjoyable match. So the crowd was mildly behind Bayley. They really wanted her to win, and Charlotte was basically asking, the, acting as the heel, pretty much getting the heat. And, uh, you know, Bayley almost won the match a few times, you know, uh, in this match. And just, it was a good technical women's match. I enjoyed it. This, you know, NXT Women's Division. They call it the women's champion for a reason because the NXT division or women's division is women wrestlers, not divas like in the main roster. But they actually have women wrestlers. They actually had great women matches, and this is a you know good example of it here. So solid match between the two. Um, Charlotte ended up winning it with the uh, natural selection. I think they, they renamed their finisher as so. One, two, three. Charlotte retains. Uh, Bailey's pretty much heartbroken. Sha Sasha comes out. I almost called it Chasha. Uh, Sasha comes out pretty much to. Humiliate and you know embarrass Bailey, but Charlotte ends up making the save for her. So looks like we'll get a triple threat feud between uh, the three divas or women, I should say, uh, down the line. So that should be good, I think. But yeah, solid match between the two uh, women wrestlers, and uh, yeah, good stuff there. And then next we go on to the uh, main event, which was the Fatal Four match for the NXT Championship: Adrian Nell versus Tyson Kidd versus Tyler Breeze versus Sami Zayn. Holy shit. Match of the year for NXT for sure. Match of the year candidate for WWE in general for sure. This was incredible. This was an amazing match. It was just... people. I've seen people on Twitter saying this is, pro this is probably the greatest Fatal 4-Way in history. It was a phenomenal match. I can't even go into detail how great this match was. The near falls were so... There were so many near falls. There were so many times that this match was over. This match had a lot of motion to it. A lot of people said this, you know, pretty much resembled to the triple threat match at WrestleMania, um, which I would agree with. You know, the emotion and the you know, the near falls always got everyone, and it was a great emotion. Uh, just everyone's at the edge of their seat. Like the crowd was standing up for the match. The crowd was really into the match. It was a lot of fun, spectacular. Uh, just oh man, awesome match. You had Adrian Neville doing flips. You had. Sami Zayn going beast mode, just, ah, I can't even call all the spots because it was so well done. Uh, great moment in the match where Tyson Kidd just went off and everyone. He had Tyler Breeze in the sharpshooter, but before Tyler Breeze tapped out, Adrian Neville actually slid in the ring and prevented him from tapping out. I thought that was a great moment to add the, you know, anticipability. Anticipability, there we go. Um, I cut that part out. I actually struggled to say that word for a few minutes for whatever reason. I don't know why. The emotion and going to the end of the match were... 
people just did not know what the match was going to end or not. The anticipate, anticipability, uh, anticipability, uh, anticipability. I can't say it for some reason right now. So excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just. You can tell I'm getting hyped up talking about this match because it was so insane. I can't even speak right now because it was so awesome. Great stuff. Sami Zayn almost at the match one with the Hoover kick on Tyson Kidd. Almost at the match one, but Adrian Neville comes in towards the end. It's the red arrow for the one, two, three victory. Pretty much signifying Adrian Neville versus Sami Zayn in the future. Um, just oh, incredible match. I'm excited to talk about it. That's why I can't speak right now. I'm just the match was insanely good. It was amazing. Incredible main event here. Definitely the best NXT main event for any of the live specials so far. But yeah, that'll do it for the NXT Takeover Fatal Four review, guys. Uh, like I said, good show. Uh, probably the worst. Not. Uh, the three main, uh, th not main, three main events, the three uh, NXT TakeOver specials, or NXT specials in general, not TakeOvers. Uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that'll do it for this review. Um, NXT TakeOver Fatal 4 Way, solid show. Uh, probably the, the weakest of the three live specials, but uh, definitely the best main event of the three live specials. So, NXT definitely taking over. Can't wait to see what happens more. Can't wait to see the next live special. Hopefully we get one at the end of the year, if not early next year. So, I'll do it for the review, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and until next time, I'll see you guys later.